Does, does the person have to look like Han Solo, or does the person have to act like Han Solo? No, no, because I think he but, acted like Han, but uh, I with, think without me going too far, Harrison Ford brought out a, a certain aspect and a certain demographic, if you understand what I mean. He brought out the women. Yeah. <laughs> he brought out the women. I don't see this guy doing that. I don't see the charisma as much as, as, as Han Solo had it. You can't, Harrison Ford, no. Because, ha look, it's Harrison Ford. No, they, but that's what I'm trying to say. It's it's the same thing as... Uh, he was the president of the United States and he was charismatic. <laughs> I'm the president of the United States. Gathered together from the cosmic reaches of the universe, here in this great hall of justice, are the most powerful forces of good ever assembled. Dedicated to truth, justice, and peace for all mankind. Welcome, everybody. It is Spinner! And today we have special guest star, superstar. Hello. And we have himself, the one and only Cal. We're going to be talking about Han Solo. There's been a lot of negative press in them, in, out there about this movie. And I've got to say, we were here to squash that crutz, all right? Because this is a damn good movie, no matter what you may say. There may be some quirks, there may be some problems, but it's a doggone good movie. So, to lay it off, let me start off with my man, Cal. Cal, hit him. Kill him with your best shot. I didn't understand the negative press. I didn't read any negative press either. I saw some stuff here or there, but I went to the movie with, you know, open mind, open heart, and I enjoyed it from start to finish. I really didn't understand... I don't understand what the negative... I really don't understand what the gripes are that people had with the film. It was a nice, adventurous romp. It, you know, you, you can't f put Harrison Ford in the role. You know, he just it's just not going to happen. I'm trying to understand what was it that they wanted out of this film. This is supposed to be the early days of Han Solo, and no one knows what the early days of Han Solo were like. So it was all new, and you had to just be willing to go in and enjoy the movie for what it was at the end of the day. There's, you can't really go in and say, well, Han wouldn't have done that. Han is not that established a character in terms of his past. So we can see him, you know, the, the Bill, Bill Dunn's Roman, you know, that would be Han becoming the character that we know. But other than that, I, you know, I just didn't see what a lot of people, you know, had to gripe about. I thought it was a very enjoyable film. So what do you think about Superstar? Give us a heads up. I really don't understand why there's so much negative comments and hate about the movie. Personally, I, I loved it. Uh, I like the part when they kind of introduced um like Darth Maul in, into the end uh, to let us know what's coming next now we know like I'm pumped for the next movie but overall I liked it okay well that's good so let me go back and just reiterate some of the things about the movie and also the main things that I think that uh, whether you agree or disagree why I think a lot of people are going after this movie so number so the movie basically is a heist movie let's get it out there we know um, Han Solo is the lovable rogue he's out there trying to heist something and um this is what was going on there. Some people don't like that. There's no lifesavers in the movie, so they're like, oh my gosh, what the heck is going on? But I think the three main areas that people have been griping on, and I think there are some legitimate points, but I don't think it's enough to sink this movie, is one, let's talk about timing. This movie came out after the emotional um, movies of Batman, uh, not Batman, of um, Black Panther and Avengers. I mean, it is hard to come at, come back after something like that if you don't have the same emotional draw or tugging at the strings. So I think this movie played it safe. Do you guys agree or disagree? What do you think about that? I mean, it's a criticism you can make. I don't know how fair it is. They're, they're different movies at it, the end of the day. But when you have a movie that gives you such a high, you know, Black Panther was such a huge um, event movie that came out for Marvel in the beginning of the year in February, and then you, all, then you have the whole Avengers um, Infinity War where, you know, characters are dying and you know people really felt for those characters I think the problem here is you don't necessarily feel the same way you're right I think this is just not it was your timing was just bad when you come after some such huge movies you know I don't, I don't know that's that's a big onus to put on the film because what you're pretty much saying is look the way that I felt about this film that's the way I should feel about this film and then you're giving a lot to the viewers as opposed to constructing a good film for this character Han Solo is not that type of, it really it's just not that type of story at the end of the day especially since we're just being introduced to him and if they're like well I wanted to have the same feeling out of Avengers Infinity War or Black Panther 
you know, I was like, well, look at the ending. This was a guy who came over, ended up, you know, what? He missed the, he was, this girl he wanted to get off the planet with. Doesn't get off with her, okay? Ends up realizing life isn't necessarily the way it's going to work out. Has to go on. You know, sees her pretty much abandon him on the planet, you know, so he doesn't know what the heck is going on. Those are good seeds that you can develop. And Black Panther, in addition to Infinity War, were movies that were developed over almost a 10-year period. So it's just not a fair, I don't know, it's just not a fair comparison at the end of the day. This is its first film. I can understand this is the fifth film, and we're still like, well, Han is still this happy-go-lucky guy who's never taken a shot. But, I mean, I, I can't argue with the timing that every uh, timing is everything at the end of the day, but... I don't think it's a fair criticism. What about you, Superstar? What do you think? Was timing an issue here? I agree. I agree with Cal. Like the way you feel about one movie it shouldn't be like, like oh, uh, Infinity War was sad. So what? Why? Why isn't this movie like that? Like, like at the end of the day, they're two different movies. The ti the timing was pretty bad, because I s like. Some people are still recovering from Infinity War. I'm still recovering <laughs> from <laughs> Infinity War. So that's a good point. So here we have the issue also. The second issue that people brought up is that people hated um, Force Awakens. They felt as though they were robbed in that movie. So the question here is, you know, because of that, they, a lot they of hated the Force Awakens or they hated the, f the follow up? Sorry, rewind, cut that out, Pete. They hated a lot of people, disliked the, Je the Last Jedi. They felt that they were robbed in that particular um, thing. They th thought it was a. a, a, a a bait and what is it? A bait and switch. Bait and switch. So, how was, what was the bait? And, what was the bait and switch? The the whole thing with um, Ray's parentage being different. The killing of um, um, what's the name of the guy? Snoke. Um, I mean, it's just that Luke Skywalker dying. I, I know they had a lot of issues with Luke. No. I you know I can understand that they had a lot of issues so no, with so, Luke. So those are some of the big issues people were talking about, and because you know the continuity that they they were pushing at the very first movie. Oh, Ray's parentage. There's Ray's parentage. There's something special about Snoke. Snoke is something about him. There's something about him. Luke. Luke is bigger, than, and then all of a sudden it's just it, the bubble was blown out, and a lot of people were, were thrown off. That's why I think that they have transferred some of that hate to the um, the, the Han Solo. Let's not see that. And also you have the issue that. Um, they also have the issue that it it just came out six months ago, you know. Where b b besides the the Star Wars movies have been coming out in the winter in, in in Christmas time, and I think it just changed the the time period it was just a little too soon for many people to go in. The same way you have the whole thing with the DCEU, with you know people went out to go see BVS, right, Batman versus Superman, but yet, which I thought Justice League was a much better movie, they didn't go out as much to see that. So you know, people will give you a chance once, burn once, but not burn twice. What do you guys think about that? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I thought Rogue One, to be quite honest, I thought Rogue One, I didn't enjoy the like first half of Rogue One. And I felt I was wasting my time, but I stuck it out. And then it turned out to be, no, I firmly enjoyed the movie. At, at, but not the, Rogue the Force, One. No, the, the, the Force Awakens for me was, at the end of the day, it was Star Wars A New Hope. They just did it again. They just did it again. Okay, there was even this line that Han said in the movie. He was like, they were saying, well, look, look at the new Death Star. And he was like, so it's bigger. And I was like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's not anything new here. But most of the stories that we see are the same stories told over and over again. They may have a little bit of new dressing or... A uh, little bit of tweaking, but we've pretty much been enjoying the same seven types of stories, you know, since we've been able to record these stories and tell them, you know, more than once. So I didn't have any issue with that. But for them to take a stronger issue with the next film, which did, okay, you want new stuff? We're going to do new stuff. And they're like, no, we hate the new stuff. We, we wanted more of the old stuff done differently, you know, along those lines. I just feel that Hans, look, I mean, you can make, there's some criticisms I could make about the film. But at the end of the day, I don't think they hold a lot of water. I just, look, if this was a film, and this was a standalone film, and we were being introduced for the first time, I think everybody would have enjoyed it. They would have been like, great, new character. I think a lot of the problems that they had was the choice in the lead actor, that he doesn't look like Harrison Ford. And they wanted to come into a film where he looks more like Han. I think that was something that definitely, whether people want to be honest about it or not, I think that was something that kept them from getting fully on board with it. And... Han Solo's story is a story of what? I mean, it has nothing to do with the Empire, the Force, the Dark Side, the Jedi. It has nothing to do anything with that. This is, like you said, it's a heist. It's a, it's a caper film. You know, it's a you know, lovable role. It's a, Bill, it's a Bill Dung's romance. And if you think about it, it's very separate from the rest of these Star Wars stories. With the exception of one thing, the Millennium Falcon, it almost has no connection to any of the others because... 
you know, this is its own this is its own story. But I think on its own, as its own story, it held up very well. And I don't I just don't get the I just don't get a lot of the criticism about it. I think a lot of it just falls flat on its face for me. I didn't like it because I wanted to like it in this particular manner and that wasn't it. And you can't even say what the particular manner was because you didn't make the but film. I think the criticism is with The Last Jedi. That the Last Jedi yeah. was, a, was a big disappointment. They're beating this up because of The Last Jedi. Yes. Uh -huh. So that's why a lot of people beat up the, um, the Justice League versus the um, Batman okay. versus Superman. That's what I'm trying to say. That, that, that oh, oh, I can see you doing that, but man, they, I mean, with Justice League, th those guys like had four films to get themselves in that position. These guys had one film and I don't know, I just, I don't know, because at the end of the day, I thought Justice League was a film that suffered greatly because of the films that came before it. Han is not that type of film. It was separate from those other films. And so I could understand, look, when you're going in the Justice League and you see Superman smiling, you know, you see, uh, you know, Batman doing certain stuff. Batman's not so much of a jerk. Superman does, seems to be happy to be Superman. You kind of scratch your head and like, well, why didn't you do that in the other film? Yeah. And there was so much animosity and resentment built up for it with the exclusion of, like, Wonder Woman. But looking at Han, Han is its own thing. It's either you're going to like it based on this movie or not. So, I, I mean, the fact that, well, you know, we're going to, we're going to, like, hurl, you know, we're going to hurl, like, you know, refuse at you simply because we didn't like the last film, then you're not being fair to the film because on its own, it was a, you know, it was a suitable film. I think that there are different tribes of, of, of viewers. You have viewers who, uh -oh. well, but let's, we'll hold on to it. What do you think about what we were just talking about? Uh, I, I think, um, I think the presentation after the last few Star Wars movies kind of affect kind of affected the way other people thought about it. Like like the last the last Jedi it, it was decent but it could have been better. Rogue Rogue One I fell asleep I fell asleep during half of it. <laughs> so so like like mo like most of it makes sense but I honestly don't understand why there's so much n negative comments towards it. Yeah, I think we're, we're, I'm in the film, and they're like, Han has to go fight the beast. And I'm like, oh, this is like some Job of the Hutt type stuff where there's always some sort of beast in a Star Wars movie. And I didn't see it coming, and I was pleasantly surprised. I'm like, oh, it's Chewie! Chewie's the beast! I was like, oh, this is cool. So this is the first time that Han and Chewie meet. So you had those, those cool moments like that. And then seeing the Millennium Falcon when it's actually a new ship you know, it's actually a new ship. It's shiny. It's not all busted and, you know, beaten down. It's not that hunk of junk that Luke is talking about when we right. first see it. So I thought those were some really cool moments. Uh, getting to see how good of a pilot Han is as well. You know, taking those particular, you know, taking those risks, you know, able to, you know, look, okay. And, th and the last scene I thought was, I really like the world. Okay, this is what the setup is going to be. We're going to anticipate all this other type of stuff. And we're still going to be able to get out. Of, we're still going to be able to get out of this out too much of a problem. So and it's set up for another. It's set up for another film. I think this is one of those films where, once people stop acting like children, they will come back and look at it and say this was a much better film than we gave it credit for. Yeah, this and that I agree with you one hundred percent. I again, I think that's one hundred percent. I agree. So the, the two issues so far we talked about, those are definite. And then the last one that people have come out is that basically Star Wars fans did not come out. They just did not come out. Um, they didn't come out. And we kind of touched on it. Was it because Last Jedi was so bad? Or was it because, um, you know, summertime is just not a good time? As opposed to, they were, they were accustomed to going out in the middle of, uh, going out in December, Christmas, you know? Well, is everyone here a Star Wars fan? We're a Star Wars fan. You a Star Wars fan? I'll, I'll watch the movies, but, but I don't have posters of Luke Skywalker. I don't have them either, but, you know. But does it matter that it came out now? Right after Deadpool and Avengers, and this, uh, before Memorial Day, or does, it, or does it matter if it makes a difference when it comes out in Christmas time? Uh, what DC did with their films, and then I'll let him jump in. What DC did with their films, I thought was smart because I think after Man of Steel, they said, you know what, we're gonna. They started hitting for these points where they had no competition. So even though Batman versus Superman, people were pillaring, you know, that film was pillaried. They were sequestered in March. They were able to have like three, four weeks to run up to make their money. They were totally dominant at the end of the day, even though the, uh, the reception to it was poor. Same thing with Suicide Squad. They had August all to themselves without any problem. Wonder Woman for me was the anomaly, but Wonder Woman just got a lot of good faith because first Wonder Woman movie, uh, lead female. I don't think anybody wanted yeah, to hit the film movie, yeah. you know, along, those, along those lines. This film got, in terms of, I don't know so much timing, but placement. 
And I don't know where else you would have placed it, but yeah, you've got December. all these Marvel. You got all these Marvel films coming over, and you know, one by one, you know, yeah, you know, it could have been like not so much that people didn't come out for it. Hey, you know, people didn't even. Make, I don't because even in terms of promotion, I didn't know the film was out. I didn't. We went to. Uh, I went to the movies, and I'm there, and I'm like, okay, what do you want to see? And you know, the guys, like, hey, why don't we go see Avengers: uh, Infinity War again? I was like, we saw that already. You know, you want to see that again? He's like, oh, so what about Solo? I was like, oh, Solo's out? Oh, yeah, sure, let's go see it. So that might have been a little bit with it, too. But The marketing, I kind of agree with you. The marketing wasn't as good. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. The, like, like the trailers for Solo, they're just, like, they're just like piling up. Like, like, like you're on your phone, you're watching something. Hey, watch Solo. You're, you're walking the streets, it's billboard. Hey, watch Solo. Then you actually see the movie, and it's like... It's, it's it's not all that it was like supposed to be. It's like Pokemon Go. It's like bringing Pokemons into real life, but it's actually just like staring at your phone for the majority of the day. It's it's, it's not what it was hyped up to be. Right. So I mean that's uh, yeah. I think the hype was a lot less. Than, I I just think you're right. The marketing was just not as good as it possibly could have been um, compared to some of the others. And, and again, I I think timing was a huge issue. It was just in the wrong time. The wrong. It wasn't a bad movie. It just wasn't a great movie. Right? Can we agree with that? Yeah. And they needed a well. I mean, look, the lead is the lead, but if they had someone who was more along the, I think if they honestly had someone who was more along the lines of Hansel of uh, Harrison Ford, they probably would have stoked a little bit better. But too. here's it: does the person have to look like Han Solo, or does the person have to act like Han? Solo? Uh, no, no, because I think he the, acted like Han, but uh, I with, think without me going too far, Harrison Ford brought out a, a certain aspect and a certain demographic. If you understand what I mean. He brought out the women. Yeah. <laughs> he brought out the women. I don't see this guy doing that. I don't see the charisma as much as as, as Han Solo had in him. You can Harrison Ford? No, because ha look, it's Harrison Ford. No, they, but that's what I'm trying to say. It's it's the same thing as uh, he was the president of the United States and he was charismatic. <laughs> I'm the president of the United States. Okay. So the love will roll. I mean, is there anything else you guys want to say? I think we covered it off. For, uh, Looking forward to Solo too. Oh, one thing I wanted to point out, one of the great things I liked about the movie, there was a lot of Easter eggs. You had the whole thing with Darth Maul at the very end. I mean, spoiler, naturally, we're giving you what's going on. But you had other things, too. The Mandalorian armor, which um, um, Darth Maul, if you watch the, anyone who watched the Rebels Star Wars show are going to love it. The Clone Wars are going to like because you have a lot of little references here and there. Also, at the very end, basically, the whole reason this thing went down is that um, part of the, the, the switcheroo with the um, heist, I don't want to go into the detail, is that it helps to fund the rebellion. So in, whether he knew it or not, he didn't realize initially he was helping to fund the rebellion, the start of the rebellion against the Empire uh, at the end. You know, and then of course they have the famous Kessel run that he always talks about that no one knows anything about. <laughs> you know, I did and the, that was I did the Kessel run, which is excellent. You know? That was executed very well. That was executed very well. And the explanation as to why the Millennium Falcon is just so good. You know, it's more than just it being a ro it's not more than it just being a a, 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 um, a a ship. It has a special addition to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I thought the sequence. I mean, Lando. I thought was play. At, at first, I wasn't going to see the film. Because there was some article saying that Lando was going to be pansexual. And I said, I don't know what the hell that means. And I'm not, I don't really want to be bothered with it. But I came in. I thought Donald Glover did a very good job as Lando. I thought he nailed Lando where, what happens? They come and they're, they're having a standoff. And he's like, there's all these people on that ship. You know, don't worry about it. Don't take another step. We've got a, you know, we've got a ship full of guys. And Lando's probably looking like, the heck with this. And he just flies, <laughs> he just flies <laughs> off. And I'm thinking maybe he'll come back and like he's like no we didn't see him again until they're playing cards at the end of the day. When they were playing the famous Sabat game. Yeah, and I was, and I, that was something else in the film I liked. He said he won the Millennium Falcon in a card game, and then they have that card game and they lo he lost. I was like oh so how does the story go? Because I know that Han, I know the whole Kessel run, the the Kessel runs like it's 18 parsecs. Then it becomes 16 and 14. It gets faster and faster as time goes on. He even tells Chewie he's like hey we just did that in 14, and he's like oh not if you round up you know you know. <laughs> You know, along those lines. So, you know, I thought those were really good fun. I thought those were just fun bits at the end of the day. The the main thing that I actually have, I thought uh, lead actress Amelia Clark. To be honest, I thought she was too old for the role. And in, in, uh, she looked significant. She just looked older, like about ten years older than Han. Even after all, even after all the time they spent. So that type of stuff kind of throws me out when she looks like more like your older sister than your love interest. But hey. Oh, I did not see that one coming. Did you? <laughs> not at all. <laughs> if, if the second movie for Solo comes out, would it really be Solo or would it be Duo? There's probably more Duo. I mean, I think the biggest and and, and, and let's say we're, we're 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 advocating that there is a second movie, right? Because you're gonna have Darth Maul in it. You're gonna have 
Amelia Clark is going to be back in it, who I thought did a decent job. It wasn't fantastic, but she did a decent job. Um, I can see what you're talking about. She definitely looked, she was more reserved in the role that she played in. And so there was a lot of hidden secrets of what she is or what she's been doing. We know she's been up to something, and we don't know exactly to what end she's up to, right? Yeah, she's no good. Aren't they all? <laughs> you know, aren't they all? So, guys. That, that, that was his comment. <laughs> <laughs> so, spin a rack? Out. Out. Go watch the movie!